guys, I'm Alicia Davis. And I'm Trio Springer. And this podcast is a whole bunch of real life. Yep, life as a woman and a mom can be hard sometimes. We totally get it. We've learned that discovering our unique talents and remembering our potential gives us the ability to tap into our own power. And it's amazing. Plus, it's always better to journey through life with a sis, right? Right. Sis, you have more power and potential than you realize. We see you and we believe in you. You've got this, sis. Hey, sis. What's up today? (laughs) Oh my gosh. I'm so happy because we actually are together. We totally are together. And in that togetherness, (laughs) we have brought our families together. (gasps) So I, yeah, we drove a few (laughs) hours, a few states away and decided to come visit for a few days um, because sometimes you just need a best friend. So totally we're here. We're here. And all of our boys are together. We literally have 10 boys, Uh, including the husbands, including the husbands and us two girls. We're totally outnumbered. We're totally outnumbered. So we escaped and we're doing um, this podcast for you. And we decided that we wanted to call it all the stuff (laughs) because she's right. We need a best friend. And I'm so grateful to have my best friend here with me today because there's a whole lot of stuff, you guys. And so we've kind of been talking a little bit about all the stuff. And the most recent stuff for me is the mom stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The mom stuff can get really sticky sometimes. It can. Because being a mom is awesome. Let's face it. I mean, being a mom is awesome, but you have all of the awesome along with the challenging and the frustrating and everything else that goes with it. Like, it's just all together. Yeah. And do you remember the days that you... If you felt tired, you could maybe take a nap if you wanted. Yeah. Okay, that well, happen. I feel tired a lot these days, mm-hmm. like mentally exhausted oh, because yeah. the teenagers are like, let me push that button. <laughs> and then there is no nap available, guys. So, yes, some of the mom stuff is that we, um, I just took my son to get his learner's permit. And it was really funny because one day we were going to get in the car. Um, I was taking them to an appointment and he goes to like get in the driver's seat after he had been having an argument with me or kind of telling me like, you know, just being sassy. And he goes to get himself in the driver's seat. Nuh-uh. And I'm like, oh, no, no, <laughs> you don't get to treat me that way and then drive and get what you want. Get in the other the other side. <laughs> and that was the end of that. But can mm-hmm. you believe that? Yeah. I can. <laughs> it makes me laugh because it makes me realize that all of my kids do stuff like that, too. We, yes, they do. They come at me with silly things. And I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And then I I was raised in the generation by the generation of kids are seen and not heard. Yeah. Yep. Well, these kids are definitely seen and heard, which I love. But sometimes they, like, I just wonder where like that gumption comes from of I'm Mm -hmm. going to do what I want to do and maybe not what mom asked me to do or I'm going to talk this way. Hmm. Where do you think that comes from? This is a strong generation that like these younger generations are just strong in all ways. Well, and they don't hesitate. They don't. They don't hesitate and they're The thing is, is, you know, we want them to be sure of themselves. We want them to Mm -hmm. be confident, but we also want them to be respectful. Right. And kind and courteous. (laughs) And that's the trick. Because I feel like if they aren't able to speak up, Mm -hmm. they're going to get bowled over by the rest of the world that does. Yeah. So we're not saying not to speak up, but we are saying to be respectful. Right. And for me, it's going to start in the walls of my home. Yeah. So that's why when he came out and was like, smile on his face, trying to get in the driver's seat to drive, I'm like, no, nope, (laughs) passenger side, buddy. We're not going there. (laughs) Yeah, we, so we have this um, funny tradition. When we come to Nebraska, we end up buying a car. (laughs) So a couple years ago when we visited, my husband wanted to trade in his truck and get another car and trio and her husband just said oh we've got this great guy we're actually looking at getting a van from him you should just go check it out yeah and i sent my husband 
just to look at things. <laughs> and of course, I get a call an hour later. He's like, you need to come down and look at this. So I did. So we bought a car two years ago on a vacation in Nebraska. And this year when we came back, <laughs> my my oldest is 17. And he's like, yeah, I could really use a car next year. I'm, I'm going to be a senior. I, You know, we should, maybe we should buy another car from this guy. And I'm like, yeah, maybe we should. So these, these moments, these hard things in life that like it all, they come at random times. Like I think Nebraska is my car buying spot permanently, Tria. Yes. But when we went in, we're talking, we get the, all the details and I'm trying to make this an experience for my son too, not just we're buying a car, but I want him right. to be involved and be a part of it. And trying to balance how that worked yeah. was a struggle for me. And I didn't anticipate that. Right. And you guys, I can say that because I've been here going through it with her. So I know, <laughs> um, I know the, the background of it. And I just have to say, wowza. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. And that's why I think all the things, we're talking about all the things, they come up yeah. when you don't anticipate it. And when you do... And I think this weekend has been one of those. Yeah, didn't, wasn't thinking about that one. No, no. And here's another, like, all the things. Speaking of, mm. like, the boys and being a boy mom. Yeah. Okay, I grew up on a farm. You guys know that. If you watched our YouTube channel, you saw what that looked like. But um, we are renting a, not renting, we're leasing a horse. Which, okay, let's just pause for a second. <laughs> Tria goes to visit her family, and she comes home, and she's like, yeah, guess what? We're leasing a horse. I was like, you can do that? What do you mean you're le- What does that mean? So just explain that quickly. Okay. <laughs> so for us, what that means, and perhaps different stables have different rules or how it's done, but typically it's going to look like you pay a certain amount of money every month, and you get to take care of the horse, as in brush the horse for us. It's brushing the horse and riding her. Um, and we pay that money to the owner and she feeds the horse, she boards the horse, she does the farrier and the vet, like all of that. So we really, we really get a great, great end of the stick out of it because we get to enjoy the horse. And so that's where I'm going to pick up is this was our second week in leasing the horse and mm-hmm. she's been really fun. But um, this is a, a piece of property in which there's multiple horses and with that being said there's multiple pastures and fencing and my youngest son who's eight was feeling really confident and he went out to go talk to some of the horses while we were um, working with the the horse releasing and so he was on his own talking to the horses out in the pasture and then all of a sudden (laughs) what he comes in to the arena where we're working and mom mom and he's like crying and i'm like oh okay what's going on and forgive the background noise because we're outside recording this (laughs) but he had gotten electrocuted by the electric fence oh my gosh and was just scared and hurt you know if any of you have done that where you grab the electric wire not knowing it's a little bit of a buzz (laughs) Um, and I think it's just a growing experience that anybody who lives on a farm will eventually go through but he learns yeah don't touch the fence Mm -hmm. unless you know it's not hot and we went over the ones that didn't have the electric wire and those were safe and the ones that did and don't go talk to those horses because you'll get hurt you guys I think we could do a whole podcast on well we're going to I think in the near future Mm -hmm. but boy mom oh yeah yeah boy mom and we could make one just out of our experiences of being a boy mom we really could I Uh, well and most people, when they think about being a boy mom, they think, okay, how many trips to the emergency room have I you know. had? Knock on wood, I've had one. I've only had okay, two. Okay, two. Knock on wood, two. I've only had two. And, and it was been... with the same child. Really? <laughs> but multiple years apart. Yeah. See, and ours were minor. Something yeah. like like one needed staples because he had a little gash in his head. Like, it was, that doesn't sound minor when I say it I like know. That, I'm like, was. well, we had one that 
when he was two bit the fish thermometer and had we thought it had like little mercury balls oh. in it so we were worried you know he was supposed to be taking a nap and yeah. all of a sudden he this thermometer was broken because he bit it and i'm like oh no did he swallow the glass and so like we went into the er and had x-rays and figured all that out but wow. the same child multiple years later fell and slipped on the ice during a christmas party in the parking lot oh and gosh. got a major concussion oh so gosh. i'll say that's our extent of the er so far and i don't need any more all right so where's our wood right in front of okay. us like knock for me too seriously okay you guys we also painted our toes the other night yes we did <laughs> they're pink varying shades of pink and they're beautiful yeah and when we're together we do try to carve out some time in which we get to be girls together because we've told you guys that we're kind of girly girls <laughs> like we are both dancers we like getting dressed up we like being girly girls we like shopping i know so your son actually asked me something interesting all of the boys we came back from our shopping trip uh -huh. we'd been out a little while and I went downstairs, everyone was playing games, and I can't remember which, but one of your boys was like, you guys were gone a long time. <laughs> Why do you guys have to go and be gone so long? And I, I said, you know, as moms, we are with you guys day after day and weeks and months, and we love you, but we don't often get to spend girl time together. So when, when I come to visit, I steal your mom away for a little bit because I know she's had you for a while and I want her for just a little bit. And he, he was okay with that. He was all right. They're so funny, but they've had us like crazy during quarantine, guys. I know. Come on. A little too much sometimes. I know, like Fran said, like there can be too much time spent together because yeah. this is not how it was meant to be. Not this much. Not this much. Oh, so we took some girl time. We, we went shopping and mm -hmm. that was really fun. Yep. We had some girl talk and then we decided to um, watch some a girly show we did we need girly shows and i even lent alicia one of my favorite kind of girly no brain thoughtless just read a book enjoy a story kind of a thing um books by one of my favorite authors so we'll have to see what she thinks about that later down the road but we also painted our toenails ourselves there was no professional pedicure mm. And Not at 10 p.m. at night, anyway. Yeah, no, but there was some but it feels good. girl watching shows oh, yeah. while we painted, and that was worth it. Do you know what we should do, Trio? What? We should talk about some of the books that we like. Yeah. And some of our favorite shows and just different things like that. Maybe, like, let's do it now. Favorite things. Should we do it now? Kay. Yeah, because I think that would serve a lot of people during quarantine. Okay, so I'm going to start. There's one, this, this is actually a set of books. And it yeah. goes back to the boy mom thing, but oh, yeah. really any mom or any person thing. Mm -hmm. um, the author of these two books is Carol Tuttle. And the first one is called Just My Nature. Mm -hmm. And the second book that she wrote is called The Child Whisperer. And in these two books, she talks about different energy types. And most people think about personality types and the differences and how that works. But she talks about energy types and how no matter what your gender is or how you were raised, that you have a different type of energy about you. And she categorizes it in four different parts. And I don't, I would love to talk a long time about it. I'm not going to do that now. But I will tell you that in talking with my husband about it and in reading them and looking at all of my children, it has opened up my mind to more of who they are as a person and their skills and gifts and what's possible for them and how to parent better. Um, just one example, uh, my oldest son is not your typical rough and tumble boy. Mm -hmm. And he could get miscategorized as too gentle and sensitive and he's not a he's right. not the real boy right like that's yeah. in the world if you're not super strong and masculine something's wrong if you're not a boy well my son is extremely athletic yeah and at the same time is really calm yes. and gentle and sensitive and patient and knowing that about him one of the energy types that carol talks about in her book is 
a sensitive child. And these are some of the tendencies that they have. They like people to be comfortable. They like wearing comfortable clothing. They're mm -hmm. not, they're, they don't want to rock the boat. They want conversations and interactions with people to be comfortable. So learning what I learned about him, I was able to step back and go, ah, okay, I'm going to honor him for this. And at the same time, help him learn more about who he is and what other energy types he has and how they can play into who he is as a person. I love that. It's been really, really good. So I need to read that. I'll put those titles and the author in the show notes. Yeah, do that. That'd Kay. be fun. What okay, you like? so I'm not, <laughs> you guys, I've been doing school for like the past six years. I haven't read anything like super fun like Alicia or, <laughs> you know, I mean, oh, come I have, on. You I have because in the breaks, I would just pick up the really easy kind of, like I said, stupid, you know, you don't have to think books. They're not stupid books. They're just easy stories you to just follow. En you just enjoy the plot. You don't have to right. concentrate. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we need those type of things too, because yep. sometimes we work way too hard and we just need to do a little something for us that lets us relax and just be. And so one of my favorite authors is Debbie McComber, and she has had several of her books made into like the Christmas Hallmark movies. They even did, the Hallmark Channel did Cedar Cove based on her um, books that she had written. But for me, I enjoy her um, writing because it's not often very long, and they're just kind of cute, fun stories. And two, I try to be careful about what I um, am reading um, because I love the romantic comedies and romance and that's fun, but it can also get pretty graphic or explicit and I kind of try to stay away from those. Um, and so for her, uh, she's just kind of my safe person mm -hmm. because they're just usually really fun, cute little stories and she has a ton of books. So I know I'll find something and just, it usually works out really great. So if you see anything that's Debbie McComber, pick it up and mm -hmm. you could read it, you know, just a few minutes a day and get through a book probably in a week mm -hmm. or less, depending on how much time. Yeah. So one that we both read, there are a couple, actually several that we both read, but one of them is um, Rachel Hollis's books, like yes. both of them, that her most recent ones. And you guys, they're just real. They are real. And they're genuine and they're, they're not fluffy. She no. calls it like it is. Mm -hmm. And she's extremely relatable as a female, as a wife, as a mom. It's... It's refreshing to read books like that when you're like, oh, thank you. Someone's actually being yeah. genuine and not yeah. hiding behind something, right? Yes. So if you want if you want to feel a little bit more open and free and, yep, this is exactly, this is who I am. Here you go. Then Rachel Hollis books are for you. Yeah, totally. I would support that. And um, some of you that are listening may have heard the news rec recently with her and her husband. Um deciding to get a divorce and so I would encourage you to not let that deter you um, simply because we're all human beings right and with our humanity we're very imperfect but that doesn't mean that our efforts in trying are wrong right because you can read her books and you can find nuggets of truth in them that might apply to where you are in your life or something that you know you've experienced before and you, she's very relatable um, but she also talks about working on her marriage and mm -hmm. and things like that and you know what all of us are on a journey and we're all working on something and just because we're working on it doesn't always mean it will be a perfect outcome but it also doesn't negate the effort to try and the good that comes from and it. And the good that comes from it. Yeah. And so I'm not going to go there about my opinions or anything. I'm just going to give them space and grace, both she and her husband. Yep. Um, because they're humans. Yep. And they get to choose what they feel is best for them. Yep. But super, super good books. Yeah. What else do you like? What other books? Okay. So um, I also enjoyed reading and listening I'm kind of an audiobook person. Um, so, some of the audiobooks <coughs> that I've listened to recently, um, I really enjoyed Shoe Dog. 
It's about, I want to say, well, I don't, Phil, Phil Knight, I believe. I could be totally wrong, but he is the founder um, of Nike. And it talks, his story is amazing. And I just love um, hearing his story and where he um, has been in his life because Nike has not always existed. Hmm. And he actually had to go through a lot of experiences and try really, really hard um, to number one, get the people, I wanna say in Japan, to work with him, to allow him to sell shoes in the beginning. And so I loved hearing his story because um, sometimes I think of Nike as an institution that's just been around forever. And it, ra- it really is something that is fairly new. Yeah. And when you dabble in something new, it just takes effort and work. And A he, yeah, he put that in. He, he was willing to have a vision of what he wanted to accomplish and really to do something different than what his family had kind of taught him was mm-hmm. the traditional route to go and he did a really he su- he was successful but it wasn't without some failures on the way right so shoe dog is that spelled d a w g no it's <laughs> it's just d o g but i'll put that in the show notes too okay. um because shoe dog was was really good as well okay i want to read that one i haven't read it yet yeah well, you know me. I sometimes do better listening <laughs> to the audiobooks. I, I will be honest. I much prefer the audiobooks yeah. most of the time, unless I know it's a book that I yeah. am going to reread and mark up and and dog ear the pages. I and, know. you know, like there are some books like that, but for the most part, audiobooks are, yeah, I highly recommend. Yeah. Okay. So we highlighted a few books. Did okay. you have another one? Or should no. we move to series tv let's things. do or podcasts okay podcasts okay okay what podcast have you loved oh my gosh well besides our own besides no. our own <laughs> no i one of my go-to's is jody moore's better than happy yep i love hers because again she is real and talks about how to use your thoughts to help create the outcomes that you want in your life and how to deal with difficult people or difficult circumstances or um if you're if you're suffering with challenges in your life like how can you face those in a way that will help you do it intentionally Mm -hmm. and with an attitude of growth yeah and I love her I can't there's no time to go into all of it but it is definitely one that that will um I think you'll love it So, yes, I like Jodi Moore too. Alicia kind of got me listening to her, and um, I must say, there's a lot of good stuff there as well because so much of who we are really starts with how we think about ourselves and how we see ourselves and talk to ourselves. And I I love the tactics that Jodi um, focuses on in trying to help us really broaden our perspective of who we are but also of others as well Mm -hmm. Um, my podcast that I have found really helpful for me um, because we have you know I have four boys um, and we are on a journey of discovery as we raise them but for me um, it's the attitude um, podcast it's ADHD experts podcast and I was telling Alicia yesterday, I'm like, oh, when I feel myself starting to get a little bit frustrated, I know I need to open the podcast up <laughs> and listen to them because there's so many different topics that they cover. And whether you have a kid that has ADHD or you just have a kid, there's, or you have ADHD yourself or a spouse that does, honestly, there's just great, great Um, things in there that will help you with Mm -hmm. life Mm -hmm. Um, they have things trying to set your kids up for success in school um, with organization with use of time with 
all of that stuff. They have one focused on sleep and why sleep's important. And I'm like, you know what? Whether or not you have ADHD or anything, we all sleep. <laughs> and it's really good to understand um, the importance of it. So it's done by um, Attitude. There's also like Attitude Magazine or Mag, and you can find that online. But there's also this podcast, which is called Attitude, and it's with an ADD. I-T-U-D, and it's really, really excellent. Um, I like that one, too. Yeah, I've listened to a couple of those, and I find them really helpful, too. So (laughs) this one, this next one, actually. You might hear our kids coming soon. We still love them, and we love you. So we're going (laughs) to continue. We will. Um, one One of my favorites, actually, one of the very first podcasts that I ever listened to was The Way I Heard It with Mike Rowe. And he has such a deep voice. Yeah. And it's so intriguing to just listen to him speak, first of all. But the way he has his podcast run is that he's got these fantastic stories and tells them in a way that you don't know who he's talking about. That's cool. All of the stories are people who are probably famous in one way or another or or presidents or like people that you know and then he finds these stories and writes them and tells them in a way that he at the end you finally figure out who it is that he's talking about and you go no way that was Elvis Presley or nah that was the second president of the United States like that it's just it's that aha moment at the end that makes you want to keep listening to him like back to back yeah. So you have your stories, like your cute yeah. little romance novel. Like, this is the that for That's me. That's awesome. Yeah. That reminds me of, you know, back in the day, the Paul Harvey. That's exactly what it reminds me That's of. That's so awesome because yeah. I miss him. Yeah, okay, me too. Okay, I'm going to have to listen to that one too. Yep. Okay, so just a few kind of of our favorite shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yes, they are going to be, well, some of them are girly. Some of them are just, <laughs> well, kick butt. Yeah. But mine... And I'm just going to tell you, you can find them on Netflix or Amazon Prime. But um, I'm going to start with Jack Ryan. Mm. That was really awesome. And that's (laughs) one my husband and I watched together. Well, we often watch these together because we're supportive of each other. And we like to spend time together. So Jack Ryan was one that he loved. And then I watched. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is good. (laughs) Um, Another one for me was Virgin River. I've heard of that one. But it's I it. really good. It's <laughs> one um, one season. Look it up. Um, I also watched Northern Rescue. Really, really good. Mm. Um, again, one season, but it leaves those open loops of keeping your brain interested. Right. And I love those sort of shows. Always. Yeah, and then Alicia and I, we have some that we share. We do <laughs> because we might have suggested it to the other. So. Um, Oh, I want to say a month ago, maybe a little more, I got into trouble because Trio said, have you been watching Pull Dark? I'm like, no, what is that? She's like, it's on Netflix, right? Or was it Amazon? I think it was um, on Amazon. I, yeah, I can't remember. I think it's Netflix. I think it's, I don't remember. Okay, I'll look. But it's Keep called talking. Pull Dark. And she's like, you have to watch it. It's so good. And I said, okay, how many seasons are there? Because <laughs> when, I, when I watch a show, I can't just sit there and be like, I'm only going to watch one show a week because then it'll take me like two years to get through it all, right? So I binge watch. And my husband laughs at me and I might disappear for a few hours at night because my type of shows, he, he doesn't really get into the same ones that I do. Yeah. <laughs> so I did. I watched Pole Dark and got totally oh. sucked in and finished it. It is so good, it's, and it's, it's on Amazon. It is on Amazon, and that one is, it's so great because it's like girl power and not really paying attention to social norms and thinking outside the box, all in the time frame that is right after um, the Revolutionary War. It's so good. You guys got to watch so it. Yeah. Um, oh, and I just had another one on my mind, and it You left. also liked oh, that oh, one. Hold on. The other one that I totally loved. I just thought of this. Um, is and I believe it's on Amazon as well, but it's called Madam Secretary. Oh, I yeah. loved that one. Absolutely loved it. We just finished the very last season, and the very last show. I was like, you know what? They ended that perfectly. Okay, it was fabulous. And <laughs> I, yeah, just go watch that one. Look it up. Yeah, Paul's been watching that one, so I'll have to watch that too. 
Um, the other one we liked is Anne with an E. I, I gotta admit, there were some things I really liked about that, yeah. and other things where I was like, eh. It's not your traditional Anne of Green Gables, uh -uh. but it is a modern spin on it, and you may like it. Okay, one of my all-time favorites, though, because I could take or leave Anne with an E, but um, I absolutely love Find It on Disney+. Plus. Um, girl meets world and watch it with your children it's <laughs> it's just really clean it teaches a lot of good life lessons but you know when we were kids it was boy meets world mm -hmm. and so now it's him raising him and Topanga Corey and Topanga raising their kids is it the same actors yeah oh that makes it good yeah and so totally awesome especially with kids I'll check it out yeah Okay, well, we're kind of reaching our time with you guys because we could probably go on and on, <laughs> but we may have to save some for another day, and this will give you a little bit to get started on mm -hmm. um, after you listen because, guys, we got to keep living this life, and we got to keep it real, and we got to keep it fun. And so these are just a few of the things that we have been able to do to, for one, manage getting through the day to day mm -hmm. and to finding joy and finding a little bit of time for ourselves as yeah. mamas and um and being friends with one another and and stuff like that yeah. so totally important to still be there um you've got this sis you totally you've totally got this and we're here for you yeah go in your day bye thanks for listening we'd love to hear your thoughts or suggestions for future episodes Visit us on Facebook or Instagram and be sure to share some of your own personal wins so we can celebrate along with you. And don't forget to click on the three dots below to share this episode with a friend who's on your heart today. Go win your day, sis. We love you.